chosen this place of worship to honor the Lord's name with us, whether online or in person. If you are new to this church, we would like to thank you for worshiping with us, and we warmly welcome you. I would like to give a Carol Burnett-like shout out to Geraldine Pritchard, Daryl Hollis, and church nanny Virginia Colley. We miss you guys. I cannot believe that it is almost the um, end of October. There is a lot to do and a lot happening this month and in the upcoming months. As worship committee chairperson and one of the newsletter editors, I am looking ahead to what responsibilities I have and for article topics to put in the newsletter. One thing I have to do is find liturgists to fill the lectern. So if anybody wants to try it, I will put all the extra prayers in the bulletin for you and you just need to lead them. Um, uh, another job I have as worship committee chair is finding Advent readers to do the short Advent readings starting at the end of November. <clears throat> Please be thinking about that. And if you and a family member or a group of friends wants to give it a try, tell Amy Rogers or myself. That too is scripted for you ahead of time. Now on that note, Please let me turn your attention to the announcements found in the bulletin. Our flowers, the beautiful flowers today, are presented to the glory of God in loving memory of Natalie Lute and presented by Ed and Laura Stork. I can still see her sitting right back over there in the middle, in my memory. Our Halloween festivities this year will consist of participating in the community trunk or treat in lieu of our own trunk or treat or party. It is set for this Wednesday, October 26th at the high school with setup beginning at 5 p.m. and the trick or treat starting at, or the trunk or treat starting at 6 p.m. The Joy of Fellowship Committee is inviting anyone who would like to help defray the costs of the treats to see Joe Blake, Karen Wood, or Holly Kithcart with your financial donation. Adults are also asked to help in the distribution of treats by joining us in costume. We need many hands to make it a success. Thank you. If you have any November newsletter items, they can be given to me. Um, any trustee, deacon, joy of fellowship announcements, any information about the Christmas season. Um, it is the November newsletter, so it sounds like we're moving along fast, but we want to get the info out. Session will meet tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. in the parlor. Today, the Lighthouse crew will meet for dinner at the Cracker Barrel in Altoona at 6 p.m. Planning ahead, we need liturgists for November. If you're interested, see me, <laughs> or Amy Rogers is also on the committee. The upcoming women's retreat is being held at the Tomahawk Lodge on November 11th and 12th. Please sign up on the sheet at one of the church entrances there's on the bulletin board as soon as possible. This is just to get an approximate head count. Reservations should still be made by contacting Diane Thomas. We have some other announcements that were not in the bulletin. We'd like to highlight the insert. It is from the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program, and they're urging your support in this hurricane season. And there is a form you know, on the um, insert where you can give a donation if you'd like to send it to them. Practices for the Christmas pageant that the children put on will begin November 6th during Sunday school time. We need a consistent turnout to come to Sunday school in November's, all Sundays in November and then in December up until December 11th when the pageant will be presented in worship service. 
So be thinking about that and hopefully get the kids here for Sunday school starting November 6th. Another announcement. There are two plants in the nursery in need of a forever home. Please take them. They will love you for as long as they live. <laughs> are there any other announcements? Yes. Uh, yes, there, there will be a blood drive at uh, Trinity Methodist Church on Election Day, November the 8th, 1230 to 6. Vote for life. Give blood. Okay, so there is a uh, blood mobile at Trinity Methodist Church on Election Day, November 8th, 1230 to 6, right? So All right, anything else? And we have a moment for mission from Carol Moore. The moment for mission is about Samaritan's Purse. The boxes are here. They are there are some here on the on the pew, and there are some underneath the clock on that pew. Uh, also, so pick up one, pick up two, and fill them. Uh, sometimes this is the only gift a child will receive, uh, and that is uh, that's happened many times. They go to a hundred, one hundred different countries. Uh, through Samaritan's Purse. And of course the Gospel of Jesus Christ goes with them as well. Uh, we are participating, so fill it with uh, gifts, uh, personal supplies, school supplies, uh, small toys, things like that can go in here. And uh, prior to this, prior years, it cost $9 and each person was asked to pay, to donate $9 for each box that you fill. This year, well, the price has gone up to $10 to start with, and this year the deacons have voted to pay the $10 per box that are brought into the church. Now, if you still would like to pay your $10 per box, that's fine, but would you pay it instead <clears throat> to the church to be reimbursed uh, to the deacons? So whichever way you want to do it, that's fine. But the deacons are paying for each box. Now, the last word I had was these are due back by November 13th. Is that correct? Okay, they're due back, uh, it must be three weeks from today, November 13th. So if you bring them in, they will be blessed and they will be taken to Clearfield to be sent with a lot of other boxes. Oh. Don't miss this opportunity to spread the love of Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
I got a note here. For clarification, um, the, bo the box, the $10 for the boxes are for the shipping. So we just want to make sure you, you know, that's what that's for. Please join me in our opening sentences. The king of love, our shepherd, is of adoration together. Loving Lord, we come before you today to worship and adore you. We know that often we do not recognize you, even in our midst. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. We want to see Jesus as we worship today.
us strength and love while we persist in short, falling short of God's glory, love and hope for us. Let us now join together to offer God those times we need Christ's help to be the people and the church we are called to be. Pray with me, please. Loving Father, you provide everything that we need from daily bread to spiritual bread that makes each day possible for us to walk through difficult and joyful times alike. We do not always trust you as we should. We often worry and take things into our own hands instead of acknowledging that your care is sufficient as is your grace. Forgive us and help us to recognize and rely on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now a time for personal silent confession. The mercy of God is unending. The love of God is all-encompassing. And the peace we share in Christ is fathomless. Knowing this, know that we are forgiven today and all days. Thanks be to God.
reading first comes from Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And secondly, from Psalm 94, verse 19, when anxiety was great within me, your congregational meeting that's in the fall and that means you get to hear us vote on new officers for the church and we'll be voting on what the church pays me and they'll be looking at the new budget for the year but the congregation doesn't vote on that You ready, Colleen? Yes. This is the annual fall congregational meeting as required by our bylaws for two purposes. The first is to elect new members to the session, the diaconate, and the board of trustees. A third, a three-term Windy Hill Auxiliary Representative, a one-term auditor, and a two-term auditor. The second purpose is to present the tentative operating budget for 2023 and to actually vote on and approve the terms of call, which are included in that budget. Madam Clerk, do we have a quorum? We do. Thank you. Has due notice of this meeting and its purpose been given as per the bylaws? Yes, they have. Then we can proceed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, we invite you to this part of our worship where we elect officers, knowing that it is you that put that call in our hearts. May always we respect that call and that we are willing to serve in that call. Thank you for those that have said yes, the budget that's being offered, and all the other little details these are all in your honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We proceed to the election of officers. I will call on the chair of the nominating committee, Bob Branstetter, to present the nominees. Or you must have first verified that your nominee has consented to serve if you're putting them in nomination. Hearing none, do I hear a motion that nominations be closed? and that these nominees be elected by unanimous vote. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of actually terminating the motions and voting on the slate of officers, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now we elect them for Dan Corman, Lynn Gillum, Joe Reed, and Robert Fogel. They are placed in nomination. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. So ordered. The session then nominates Colleen Vidorfer to a one-year position to complete a vacated term. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, we proceed to vote. All in favor of Colleen serving a one-year term, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. So ordered. The committee uh, presents the following for a three-year term on deacons. Jill Blake, Julie Jo Johnston, Paul Springer, and Diane. Opposed, no. So ordered. The committee submits the following nominations for the Board of Trustees 
for a three-year term, Ralph Nelson, Ed Stork, Bob Brandstetter, and alternate Tom Cochran. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, we proceed to the election. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. So ordered. For the Windy Hill Auxiliary Representative, the committee nominates Claire Taylor for a three-year position. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, we will vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. So ordered. For the position of a one-year auditor, the committee nominates Bill Ridgeway. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, we proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. So ordered. For the position of a two-year auditor, the committee nominates Jennifer Johnston. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, we proceed to There's donations to our church. Uh, budgeting is something that's not often spoke of in our house of the Lord, but it is something that's vitally important for us to sit here week in and week out in, in comfort as we receive his holy message, as well as all the things our church does on days other than Sundays. Um, the budget committee has met throughout the year and none of this would be possible without the help of Al Moyle, Bill Ridgeway, Jeff Iatt, Jay Milson, and especially Diane Thomas and Colleen V. Dorfer who keep all the numbers straight and keep the budget committee members straight oftentimes too. Uh, the tentative budget was available to you uh, when you came in today. If you do not have one and would like to look it over, uh, please see Diane Thomas or myself or Bill Ridgeway after the meeting. We'll gladly get you one to check out. Um, this year, our budget for preparation for the 2023 calendar year, um, we actually, like many people, through, regardless of what rock walk of life you're talking about these days, we looked at it realistically and our 2023 budget is proposed to be about 4% higher than what we had budgeted in 2022. What our staff expenses are, and none of those, uh, they're all at the uh, minimum man mandatory uh, expenses and salaries for our pastor and our other support mm -hmm. staff. We did build in on those items. Um, is there anything I can answer on the proposed budget for the order of the congregation at this time? I'd like to call your attention to the terms of the call, which were also available to you whenever you came in today. And it's the second major category uh, down in the proposed budget under staff expenses. Katie, you do have the option of removing yourself from this part of the discussion. I didn't think you would want to. Um, the Presbytery, uh, our Huntington Presbytery, uh, has a mandated schedule for ministers' salaries, and Pastor Katie has received the uh, minimum increase for her times of service in terms of call here. Uh, the other additional pensionable items are listed there on the terms of call. Uh, the only difference this year, as opposed to previous years, is you'll notice under the supplemental insurance premiums for dental and vision coverage for the pastor and the spouse, our church uh, is proposing to uh, include that coverage for Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Katie. Uh, Jimmy's church had gracious, graciously handled that on behalf of their family while Jimmy was employed at Clearfield. And uh, since he has been retired, the budget committee and we'll be talking with the trustees um, to finalize that as part, as part of our future, but as part of our 2023 budget. Uh, are there any other questions 
about the terms of call. I can tell you that the mileage on the second page of this uh, will not be available to be calculated until January when the new mileage reimbursement from the federal government is finalized. Are there any other questions? At this time, you would be asked to actually vote on the terms of call. That is the part of the budget that the congregation votes on, and it has been put into motion by the budget, budget committee. Rating. And so it does not require a second. So if you are ready, we will vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. So ordered. And those online are also allowed to vote. <laughs> they probably. Okay. Not, not seeing any votes. Okay. I didn't think so, but I didn't want to leave them out. Thank you, Tom. All right. We thank the members of both the nominating committee and the budget committee for all of their work. And I would entertain a motion to close this meeting. Seven. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Let us pray. Almighty and ever loving Lord, we thank you for the new officers, the new leadership that will be put in place in January. We thank you for our Windy Hill Auxiliary, for our auditors, and for all of the people who are rotating off of serving, we give thanks for them as well. Bless and protect our church. May we serve you faithfully, always. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The reading ends the 34th verse of the 6th chapter. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, loving Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, 
O Lord, for you are our rock and our sure redeemer. Amen. This morning we turn to the fifth in our series on the questions of Jesus. And this time the question is, why do you worry? Jesus doesn't want us to worry, and yet you and I probably have not stopped worrying on demand just because Jesus said that. We struggle with that. Jesus offers a series of questions to help us with our worry. And to no surprise, this is the longest discord in all the things that he puts together to speak about. And it's interesting because he could have talked about grief or fear or sadness, but it's worry that has Jesus' focus. And it's worry, obviously, by the length of what he has to say, it really matters to him whether or not we can have faith and not worry. So, if we look historically at worry, I think we would all agree there has always been worry. People worry about what they're going to eat or wear or do, be, who they're going to marry, who they're going to be friends with. We worry about a lot of different things. In fact, the poet W.H. Auden called the end of the 20th, 20th century the age of anxiety. And I think that probably fits. I know that young adults today frequently tell their parents, we don't want to have children because we don't want to bring them into a world like this. I know we can personally relate to that. However, there have always been problems on this planet. There have always been people who do wicked and bad things and bump into others that are not that way. We have our worries, and they're pretty firmly set in our daily lives. I can remember when Kelly was born, and this is a long time ago, 1985. I remember laying in the bed trying to learn to nurse my son, and on the news was something horrible. It was the earthquake in Mexico City. And I immediately began to worry. And what was I worrying about? I was worrying about the mothers and babies that were in the hospital. Well, over the days that we were in the hospital, we learned that the babies were actually fine because they had that God-given ability to survive until their mother's milk came in, which is several days. So they were actually okay. The mothers, not so much. But I remember, even though that was far away and it wasn't about me at all, I remember worrying because there I was, a mommy, for the first time, looking down at my baby. I think most of us would agree that our real worries started when we had children. And if you're a grandparent, I think that probably just adds to the list of who we are worried for. Now, one physician quoted by Copenhagen says that we are unique among all the creatures on this planet. We are the only creatures that worry. That should say something. The creatures that Jesus was talking about, they didn't have any worries. They did not have the concerns that we have. Now, if we want to look at the word for worry, the root word is actually to strangle. And think about it. Lots of times, it's as though our worries have us by the throat. We are in the worries grip. And yet, when we're worrying and someone tells us not to, ah, that's a little hard to stop. Jesus doesn't just say, don't do it, don't worry. He actually asked five questions. This is how Jesus brings points home to us. He asked these five questions in quick succession. And you heard them. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Are you not of more value than the birds? 
Can you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? Why do you worry about clothing? And the fifth, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now, these are called rhetorical questions, and they're similar to me asking you a question from a pulpit. You don't shout out answers. Other traditions might, but Presbyterians tend to sit there and think about the question. In printing, in writing, prior to the 17th century, there was actually a different punctuation mark for rhetorical questions. It was the normal one turned around backwards. That went out, but it probably would be helpful if it were there, because this is a question that is designed for us to ponder, for us to think about the possible answers and what that means in our lives. In a very real way, instead of challenging our worry up front, Jesus draws us in with his images of birds and clothing and flowers and grass. Consider the lilies of the field, the wildflowers, and take a lesson from them, he's saying. No gardener planted them, no one watered them, and yet they are sprinkled across the field, especially in springtime here. They are so pretty. The thing that I have been amazed by are the orange daylilies that appear to grow wild, untended, unfertilized or watered along the sides of the road that goes down the mountain to Tyrone. And it's always so pretty. Those flowers, they just come up, they bloom, and they are beautiful. Jesus has reason for wanting us to worry. If we are absorbed with worry, we're not showing that we trust God to provide. The flowers don't worry about it. The birds don't worry about it. I'm sure the squirrels and every other creature on the planet does not worry about it, but we do. And I believe it disappoints Jesus because he doesn't mind our planning for things, our research. With Jimmy retiring this year, I can tell you, we, we researched everything. We didn't know how to do this up front, and we talked to the Board of Pensions, we talked to friends that are already retired. That does not bother Jesus. The research, all of that. But what bothers Jesus is when we worry, when we don't trust him to make things turn out the way that they should. Now, I think we learned that in our first call because we were located on a highway much like this and we got lots of transients. We learned from that because we discovered that we always had food to share even though our salary was below the minimums and we shared it. We were two for one. That was the only way to get a woman into the pulpit in those days. Trust me, in the South, this was Texas. But Honestly, we learn from that because we learn that God provides. Every time our bank account would get to the point where we were both looking at each other going, oh no, what are we gonna do? One of the larger churches in the Presbytery would mail out a check and it would be just enough to help us. They knew that there were certain churches in the Presbytery that were below the minimums they tried to make sure those churches could have pastors. It was so common for us to have those transients, to give them food. We even spent a lot of time putting stamps in books in order to get the eggs for 19 cents and the milk for 30 cents and the bread almost for free. All of those things we did, but in all honesty, we never went hungry. We never were in want. And we learned 
that in a very real way, God provides. Even the simplest things, God provides. And just when you think you're not going to make it, something happens, and it is okay. God takes care of each and every one of us. In a very real way, when we learn not to worry, and trust me, I'm not perfect at that either. When we learn not to worry, we are free then, we are blessed to actually become blessings. I can't tell you how good it feels to help another person. That's why we do the mission trips. We go out, we teach the youth, that feel-good feeling of doing good. Now, if we worry about every detail about the trip, we would never go. In fact, I always tell the youth, there will be some trying times during this week. Recognize that Satan doesn't like the work you're doing. There will be some sabotage, but you just need to look at it and go, Pastor Katie said this kind of thing would happen. It'll be okay. We're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna keep on going. I think that's what Jesus is looking for here. He's not looking for the fact that in our weakness we do worry. He's looking for the fact that we can lessen our worry with our faith, with our trust, knowing God's track record in each of our lives. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for that, he has been faithful. We can trust that, and we don't have to worry. Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, and I love this quote from Martin Luther, who started it all off. He summed all of this up. Lovely lilies, how you rebuke our foolish nervousness. So every time we see those flowers, Every time we watch the birds in the air, seeing his eyes on the sparrow, we remember, even in the glory of fall that has been around us this week, that technically precedes the leaves falling, the leaves dying, but we know that in the spring, those trees will bud again. God has never stepped away from them or from us. And if we need that assurance, we only need to look around and see all that God has created. If you're worried, go watch a sunset or get up early and watch the sunrise and watch the birds. There's a picture online that one of our local photographers took at Coldstream of two bald eagles sitting in a tree We've actually seen them fishing, and it's wonderful to watch. God takes care of his creatures. He takes care of you and me. So don't worry. Have faith. Amen. reminded me that next week is also in our Scottish Scottish heritage, um, the Kirkin of the Tartan, right? So that's the time when we bring our keys or personal items and place them on the communion table next week. So just a reminder. As Presbyterians, we believe that God's word is read from the lectern and proclaimed from the pulpit. And then we stand and state what we believe by reciting in unison our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. He's having his fourth back surgery on October the 31st. He needs our prayers. We also have been praying for baby Harper Krause. He is having another surgery at Children's Hospital 
and they appreciate all the extra prayers for baby Harper, his family, and the hospital team taking care of them. And Katie's yes, she's actually a girl. Oh, it's a girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> Harper, I should know today. Names can be anything. Okay. Eating good. Mom and Dad need to be in our prayers. Of course, she does too. They have both been in the hospital and other things. Also, my brother-in-law, Tim Hodges, is now at home from rehab. Wonderful news. Uh, Jackie, who is a friend of um, Eva Strano, we've been praying for. And Jake Strauss, the mayor in Clearfield and organist at the church there, um, this is his stepson who was in an accident and he does not have to have surgery. So this is a joy. He'll still wear the cast and all of that, but no surgery. We're also praying for Bat's grandson. This is Guy's son, Colton, the oldest. He was in a horrible accident, brain bleed, the whole nine yards. So he needs our prayers, the doctors and nurses in charge of his care need our prayers. We continue to pray for Tom Holden and his knee replacement surgery healing and baby Ezekiel and of course the people of Ukraine. The Presbytery asks us to pray for the Sinking Valley Congregation, Reverend Ernie Walls and Pastor and also Bekhan Congregation and Deacon Naruma. Let us go to God in prayer. Most gracious and loving Lord, so many people in crisis, recovering from surgery, having surgery, little babies even. Lord, we ask your tender blessings on all that we have named here today, their surgeries, the people in charge of their care, for all of those who are listed on the back of our bulletin, and all those that are in our hearts today. Someone that hurts, someone that is grieving, someone who needs a doctor's care. For all the people, wherever you find them, Lord, we ask your blessings upon them. We also ask your blessings upon our commonwealth and our nation as we approach an election coming up. Help us all to remember to vote and do those things, Lord. Continue, O oh Lord, to use our church in powerful ways. And now, O oh Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Take our lives. Take everything that we do beyond these walls and bless them to your glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God's people, we are loved, we are forgiven, and our needs are provided for. As we go into the world this week, may we help others to lessen their worry, and may we lessen ours by remembering God's love for us and the wondrous ways in which he provides for us every day. And now may the blessings of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon each of us and abide in our hearts, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.